my name is Lynn and this is the Darbin Orber channel. Today I'm going to build this circle cutting jig for the bandsaw. It features an adjustable T-track with a knob here that you can slide uh, and close. And it has a pin right here so you don't have to go all the way through your circles. It also has a built-in measuring tape here so you have an infinite amount of adjustability. So you can get just the size you want. For this build, I'm using half inch Baltic birch plywood. And you're going to need cut A, cut B, cut C, cut D, cut E, cut F, and cut G. You can find all of these measurements in the description, including metric. You will also need some screws, a prong T nut, a dowel, a bolt, and a seamstress measuring tape. First of all, let's cut up all the wood. And I'm using my new crosscut sled for the crosscuts. Then let's work on the T-track going into the bandsaw cut E. First, I'm checking the width here and seeing how far in I need to make the track. Then I'm setting up the router with a quarter inch straight cut bit and I'm writing out one quarter inch up with one eighth inch in on each side to create the T. You want this to be tight, so it's better to make it a touch too tight and then do some sanding to make it fit perfectly. Next up, I need to make a very shallow dado, the width of the top of the T in the main board, cut A, where it will slide and be attached to the track. I'm making a series of very shallow cuts, about 1 16th of an inch on the table saw. Then I'm turning it over and cleaning it up with a chisel. And there are two dados here because I messed up the first and had to do a second one. Then I'm countersinking some holes for the bottom T-track. I'm screwing it in on the main board, fitting it into the shallow track and testing to make sure it fits. Mine was riding a touch high so I removed the track and cleaned it up a bit with a chisel. You want a really good fit here so it's a good idea to take your time and to ensure it rides perfectly. Once I had a good fit, I glued it in the track and screwed it down again. You want to make sure the screws are countersank well so they don't scratch the track. Of course, tightening by hand is a good idea too. And then checking again to make sure it fits well and it's looking good. Now we have the knob, so glue the two small pieces, cut G, together. Then create a knob. I used angle bisecting. I drew the bolt head on the knob, chiseled out enough space to fit it in and then I cut out the shape on the bandsaw. Next I epoxied in the bolt head and let it set up. Now I'm marking out where on the board the blade is. This is where the sliding track will go and I marked out the sides of the piece as well on the board. To make a T fit here, I'm using the router again and cutting about one quarter inch on the sides of cut B and C. You might have to check this and do another shallow pass to make sure everything fits nicely. Try it out with a track slider in the middle, held in place by the T tracks on both sides. So I've carried the lines of where the slide track will go to the back side and I'm marking out about one and a half inches in, drilling a quarter inch hole and then hammering in the pronged T nut. Now I'm aligning the center slider cut D, clamping it down and fitting the side pieces. So I pre-drill holes in both of them, put them back and screw them down. Then take the screws out, put down some glue and screw the boards down again. It's important to screw in first so you establish the holes before gluing because it makes it a lot easier to line everything up or else the glue has a tendency to make everything move. But now the screws can find the existing holes a lot easier and everything lines up much better. Next I remove the center slide and you want to make sure you don't get any glue on that. I put a mark in the center one and a half inches in and then I drill a one quarter inch shallow hole. Also mark across the hole with a pencil because it will make it a lot easier to line things up later if you have that mark. Then glue in the dowel. Okay, now let's attach the stop block, cut F, on the side. Make sure to countersink and I'm using some one and a quarter inch screws here. 
Next, I'm sanding down any burrs, getting everything nice and smooth. Now, in order to attach the measuring tape, it's a good idea to create an indention so it can lay flat. So mark out the width of the tape, and I'm putting it right up on the edge next to the sliding track. I'm using a shoulder plane. However, you could also take very shallow cuts on the table saw or use a chisel. Once the groove was just deep enough to let the measuring tape lay flat, I put on contact cement on both surfaces, waited about 40 minutes and then attached. To give the jig some protection I'm using wipe on poly and I will add many more coats since I will be keeping the jig outside. I'm also putting on some wax polish on the track on the jig as well as on the saw itself. Okay, now let's try it out. Goes in nice. The track slides perfectly, put in the knob underneath. Oh, and I later realized that I should have attached the prong T-nut on the other side of the board because it kept coming out. Of course, I fixed it once I already did all the filming, but put it on the other side and make sure it's well indented. So. Let's cut a circle, but first of all we need to drill a shallow one quarter inch hole in the center of whatever we want to cut. Then find the dowel and match them up, and then we can start cutting. So turn the saw on and push the jig all the way in until it hits the stuff and then start spinning the board. Very cool. And we can change how big we want to make the circle. So here I'm moving the slider to three inches, which means the circle will be six inches in diameter. And there we go. We can even cut odd shapes like this one, which is small enough to not cut a complete circle, but kind of create this ovalish shape. Let's try a bigger circle. That works really nice. Because the center sliding track has a T-connection, it's very stable and doesn't pop out easily. It only slides horizontally, it doesn't move vertically. So I can move it quite far out, secure it, and make a rather large circle without any difficulty. Using the jig, I could create a circle up to 28 inches in diameter, but theoretically you could modify it to cut circles of any size, as long as you increase the size of the whole unit. So as you can see, this is a very practical jig. What's really awesome about it is that you don't have to start out with a square piece of wood. It could be rectangle or some other weird shape, and you can get a perfect circle every time. Of course, the clamping system is really nice because you can set it wherever you need it. And uh, I really like having the measuring tape here as well. It makes it really easy to see and set whatever size circle you want. This video was brought to you by Laguna Tools, thriving on innovation. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if this is your first time here. I put out weekly projects. And here are some more videos that you might enjoy.